recycling old denim into new and useful things. That's exactly what we're doing today. I've been wanting to do this for such a long time. So without any further ado, grab those old jeans that you have in your closet and let's get started. Now let me give you a quick rundown of what I have here today. I have three pairs of jeans, all different colors, but all of the same style, and they're all my husband's, which is actually great because that means that I'm working with a bit more fabric than let's say if I was working with jeans that were my own, which is great, more creativity for us. And then I think I saw one pair was stained with paint, and uh, I might just have the perfect project for it out of today's lineup. I'm getting back into acrylic painting, and I need this in my life. To get the idea of how much fabric or jeans in this case you're going to need for this project, it's really straightforward. Just take a measuring tape or a ruler and measure from your chest down, however long you want it. And of course around your waist you're going to measure how wide you want it. And because I already have a full tutorial with full measurements given to you on how to draft your own apron for yourself and for kids size as well, then I'm not going to focus on it. Now, all I'm doing here is I'm taking the jeans and I'm cutting them at the seam because I'm thinking to lay the leg flat, that way it will give me one continuous piece of fabric that I can work with. And then I had an idea. What if we take the bottom of the pant leg and we actually use it as the top of the apron? Then I took the pant leg, I put it on myself, and I kind of put it at the level where it would actually sit as an apron on my body. And then I went ahead and I determined where my waist was going to be and I marked it with a pin. Now, here I also had a question whether I wanted to piece more fabric pieces or of this denim together in order to get kind of like the full size apron or if I just wanted to work with what I already had. And I decided let's just go ahead and work with what I already have. Then I took a piece of tracing paper, I put it on top and I was only interested in one half of this pant leg. And I also made a straight line from the center front of our apron to the side where my waist was going to be because I know that when you're making an apron the top is usually smaller than the waist therefore you connect the top and the waist with a really nice curved line and that's exactly what I'm doing over here. On the bottom I decided to make a curved hem and I'm doing that with a marker here. Obviously if you're doing that by yourself I would just go ahead and use something that either is heat erasable or will disappear after wash but I'm doing this with a red marker so that way you guys can see a little bit better. And once you're happy with your decisions and how it's going to look like, let's go ahead and cut it out. Now I know I always tell you guys that don't forget your seam allowances when you're cutting out your patterns, but this time, this time, we're actually cutting it out without seam allowances and you will see why in just a few moments. And I also want you to know that not everything happens perfectly from the very first try. So I've cut out my apron, I actually tried it on myself and I decided that I want to shave off a little bit more fabric from the top of my apron. And that's what you see me do on your screens as of this very moment. And now we're ready for some final steps. Go ahead and grab some bias tape. You can make your own. You can buy some at the store. Mine is one inch wide. Therefore, once we actually bind our apron with this bias tape, it's going to be half an inch wide on each side. And first, I'm going to take my bias tape and I'm going to apply it to the wrong side of the apron, sewing right into that crease. And I'm going to bind from waist to another side of the waist. So we're taking care of that curve of the bottom of the apron first. Now because I'm working with denim here, I have changed the needle of my sewing machine to the largest one I had on hand, so that way it can actually handle fabric like denim. And also when you're going over these really thick bits, like for example this one, make sure that you go slow and steady, and if needed you might want to hand crank your sewing machine instead of using a foot pedal, so that way you can ensure that the needle doesn't break. 
All right, once the bias tape is attached to the bottom, what I like to do is I like to trim the seam allowances just a tiny bit because then it really is thick. So that way the bias tape will be folded over the edge a lot easier and smoother. Then that's exactly what we're going to do. Go ahead and fold your bias tape over to the right side of your apron. And then let's go ahead and pin it. And we're going to stitch it right on the edge of that bias tape real neat. For the sides of the apron, we're actually going to do exactly the same thing, but in this case, we're going to use bias tape as the ties for the top and for the sides of the apron. So make sure that you have enough of bias tape on the top and on the side of your apron past the part that you're going to be binding, so that way you can get the binding and the ties all in one go. Now, what is an apron if it doesn't have pockets? So I've decided let's go ahead and rip the pockets off of the jeans that we just cut apart and then we will attach the same pockets to our apron and that's exactly what you see me do right now on your screens. Once everything is done and finished, I actually think it's really, really cool. I mean, yes, you can tell it's made from the jeans, but it's usable and it's nice and thick and that's exactly what I needed for my art experiments. This next project for our denim experiment of today is something that does not require a lot of fabric but is actually a very useful thing for summertime especially. And I made one of these last year and I love it. The only thing is my bucket hat was black and yellow, which is really great, kind of like a punchy print for summer. But I want something that would go really well with anything that I have in my wardrobe. And denim is one of those fabrics and one of those tones that you usually see as a neutral. And it really does go well with a lot of stuff. So that's what we're doing today. So I pull out my big binder and that's the place where I store all of my self-drafted patterns and I pull out the pattern for this bucket hat from a previous video. Of course we have the top, we have the side of the hat and we have the brim as well. And here comes the challenge. The challenge of fitting all of these pattern pieces onto a limited amount of denim fabric that we have. And I really tried to finagle it around and the only solution was to place some of them like so. So again the grain. As long as it's not on the bias, I'm totally fine with that in this particular situation. And also, instead of lining the whole hat because denim is quite thick, I decided that I'm only going to line the brim of the hat. The rest of it is going to be as is. Everything else in the construction of this bucket hat is exactly the same as in a previous tutorial. Oh, and I also used a serger on the inside because obviously I'm not lining it, so I really want to make sure that nothing unravels and the edges are really nice and neat. But you can also use a variety of different methods on your sewing machine as well. And of course, a full tutorial on how to draft and sew step by step your very own bucket hat will be in the info box below. I actually really, really like the combination of lighter denim with just plain white fabric. In my case, it's white linen. And therefore I decided, you know what, since I'm doing the lining of the brim in white linen, I'm also going to do the stitching on the brim in white thread as well. And as I was finishing my stuff, I got a little furry visitor. <laughs> she's a lot of fun. She's such a sweet little kitty. And she's been my sewing buddy for a few years now. All right, so the top is ready, the bottom is ready, now it's time to join them. 
and I got an idea. <laughs> and uh, of course I should have thought about that way before we actually started doing that because it's always great if you think through these things, but sometimes you just can't help it, right? So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is because I, I, I really love the combination of white and light blue. So here is a little stain over here. You can't really see it that much, but it's there. So I'm thinking to do a little embroidery on top before or I connect these two together. So I actually saw a really cool class on Skillshare on embroidery and I've taken embroidery class on there before, therefore I wanna do another one and I'm looking for some really simple, straightforward, easy explanation, easy project idea that I can complete right now. And Skillshare is the sponsor of today's video. If you're not sure what Skillshare is all about, it is an online community with thousands of classes, including embroidery, and and sewing and of course you know things like photography and lifestyle and whatnot illustration so many things on there the classes are really great and one of the reasons why I take embroidery classes on there is because there's no ads they're really well structured so if we really want to learn something like for example embroidery as we're talking about it right now then this is a really great place where to start so I have looked up some embroidery classes I really like this one this mixed media class for embroidery for beginners is by Flora Givels and she is giving you seven days worth of different projects so that way every day you have something new to explore and kind of deepen your insight in embroidery and push your creativity by the way, if you really want to try Skillshare, which I suggest that you do, the first 1,000 people to click on the link in the info box below or by using my code, which is Thoughtful Creativity Craft so DIY, you will get one month free of Skillshare membership. So definitely take a look. Let me go ahead and get started on this one. It doesn't look too bad now, does it? Now I just have to carefully attach the top to the bottom and that's it, the bucket head made from jeans will be ready to wear. Now is my little embroidery piece perfect? Oh, absolutely not. In fact, I'm really not that good at it at all. But you know what? It was fun, I love to try something new and I actually love the way it looks. I'm really happy with my new bucket hat and I'm sure I'm gonna get a ton of wear out of it this coming summer. Alrighty, let's move on to the next project. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a pattern for a dress, a sleeveless dress. And by the way, I'm going to be making this for my child, but you can make it any size. And remember that you can also piece the denim together, kind of like a patchwork in order to create a necessary amount of fabric for whatever you have in mind. So what I'm going to do is really simple and straightforward. And by the way, this is um, a dress that we did for Project Dresser Girl. And I did make a free pattern. It is just one size though, ages uh, three to four. Don't quote me on that. You will have to go ahead and click on that video and double check it and I will leave the link for you guys in the info box below. I'm just gonna fold it in because I don't want the shoulder part because we're actually going to be making little cute ties over here. And we're going to do that the very same way that we did an apron. So first, we need to determine how long we're going to have the top part, which is going to be made out of denim. And then the bottom is going to be this beautiful skirt out of this fabric. It's like a linen blend with something else. Again, I really like the white color together with the denim. So I think it's going to look super cute. Since I don't have enough width to cut the front and the back of the dress out of the same piece of fabric without anything in the middle, I decided, and this is the apron that we made, but I'm gonna use it as an example. I decided that I'm going to position this seam right over here as the center front and center back, and that way it will look intentional. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And from there, it really is straightforward. We've done it together so many times. First, you sew the side seam of the denim part. Then I did the bias tape on the underarm section on one side and on the other. And then I did the bias tape on the front and the back the same way that we did the apron so that way you have the ties so that way you can tie them over the shoulder. And I think that is such a cute little detail. I'm just in love. 
And of course for the skirt, you sew the side of the skirt. The bottom is just a double fold hem. And on the top, you just gather it with a basting stitch or any other method that you use. You might decrease the tension on the sewing machine if you want to. You might gather it with your serger, whatever you would like. And then once the skirt is gathered, of course you're gonna go ahead and attach it to the bodice of your dress. And that, my dear sewing friends, completes this beautiful little dress. And as I mentioned, you don't have to make it for a smaller child. You can actually make it for yourself. I think this is such an effortless, timeless style. You can wear it during summer or during spring and fall with a little jacket or cardigan on top. I think this turned out really, really cute. What do you think? Let me know about that in the comments below. Now, obviously there is a long list of things that you can make with your old jeans or your denim jackets or whatever other things that you have at home. So click right over here. You will see a full video of really fun and interesting, unique ideas that you can make with your scrap fabric or upcycle some of your clothing. So definitely click right over here and I'll see you in that video.